Fans, my name is Ekona, but this is Ekona Betalabishin, and um, I'm speaking all the way from South Africa. This is a SA Chat Podcast, getting to know South Africans in South Africa, basically, because I'm a Ghanaian, so I need to know where I am, and then get to know the people in the system, how they're faring, how it's going on, I mean, their lifestyle. So I have a guest in the studio. Um, I don't want to mention her name. <laughs> she, she's going to do the uh, self-introduction by herself. Uh, welcome to my channel. Well, thank you. All right. Because um, you don't know how to pronounce the name, that's why. <laughs> okay, hi guys. My name is Nongo Onzo Gumede. Most people, they know me by Ginger. All right. So, so Ginger. Okay. Um, the age, I think, uh, I asked a lot of ladies about their age. And they're like, ah, it's fine. Just leave that one inside. So, mm. I don't want to ask about your age. <laughs> anyway, so, so where are you from? I'm from KZM in Kansa. But then I live in Alex now. Okay. Yes. Kesa Kane in Nkandla. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Nkandla. Their, their tongue, <laughs> their tongue is a kind of, you know, yeah. so we, we just try to cooperate with the same. Kesa K in KZN. KZN. Yes, Nkandla. Okay. I'm from Nkandla. Ah, I see. Where your former president is from. Oh, oh yes. okay, okay, okay. So, what you doing, Jobek? This is Jobek, yeah? Yeah, it's Jobek. I came here 2016. I was living with my siblings. Uh, it's a family house in Extension 9. But to know if it's a lot of siblings in the house, then I decided to move out. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm renting with my two siblings. Oh, okay. So, you're here with your siblings? Yes. I mean, with your family, yes, let's see. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So growing up as a um, South African, can you tell us a little bit about how things were good, bad, scary, you know what I'm saying? Yo, growing up was very hard because me, I lost my parents when I was very young. I lost my dad when I was 11 and then I lost my mom when I was 19. Because my mom last born was four years old by the time. He's the one I'm living with actually here. Mm -hmm. I raised him, now he is 18 years old, he's doing metric now. So growing up for me was not easy because I had to take like peace jobs, uh, I still trying to rent for my siblings because we are renting where we are staying with me and my siblings. So growing up was not very easy because there was no one helping us in our family, everything I had to be hands on. Because I couldn't ask for help to anyone. You know how families are. If your mom dies at the funeral, they will say, we are here for you. And then when the time goes, they are not there for you. They are the ones who are talking about you behind your back. So me and my mm. family were like, not that close. I'm close to just few family members. You know how Zulu people are. But I heard in the news that um, in South Africa, if you are South African, mm -hmm. There are some incentives the government gives to the South African citizens. So if your mom and the dad are dead, I think still you get some money from the government, yeah? Yes, we did. But then for... We did... I, how, how old was my brother? He was four. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was four by the time when my mom died. We did receive that government money. But then when he turned 18, there was no money anymore. Oh, okay. So from infancy, it was 18. Yes. Mm. There was no money anymore. They, so they told me to go and renew it, but it was a long process for me. And I was like, nah, I can't go renew. So how do you survive without your parents? Yo, I can't lie to you. It's very hard. Very, very hard. Because yeah. now I'm a parent. Now I... I it's the age of... Are you have a child? It, no. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you've got a child, but me at the age of 17, mm -hmm. I had to become a parent oh, at okay. the age of 17. Mm -hmm. I didn't even enjoy my childhood because ever since my mother's kids were born, mm -hmm. my mother was working. So whenever she's not home, I have to take care of the kids. Um, so you automatically become a parent? Yes. Okay. I became a parent when I was like 10 years old. I had to take care of my siblings. From there, ten, from 10 years old, I've been taking care of my siblings. And then uh, when my mom gave birth to my brother, the last born, mm -hmm. uh, she gave birth with operation. And then 
she got sick. She had to go back to the hospital to the point that I have to stay back with my brother because they said the child is no longer admitted, only the mother is admitted. So I stayed with my brother for like one week. I didn't go to school. I was doing grade nine by the time at Udumo, at Monday. So like uh, my classmates, they were coming to look for me. Why are you not in school? And I'm like, uh, I'm helping my mother. When I went back to school, they were like, yo, this one had a child. Even now, if they, if they are calling me, they always ask me, how old is your child now? They didn't know it's my They didn't believe me, actually. They didn't they thought my it was mother's a child. child. Okay. They thought it's mine. So, that's life. But, but as you speak, you have a child, yeah? Yes, I've got two kids, two beautiful boys. I've got 14 and 11. Mm. Yes. Okay, so how's life growing up as a single parent, you know, <laughs> for now? <laughs> because <Yo. laughs> because you, you have your brothers, and, I mean, your siblings as your mm. kids. So how's life growing up as a single parent? Yo, it's not, it's not good. Trust me, it's not good at all. But then I, I'm not taking care of my children. Cause my mother, my ex, <laughs> mother-in-law, is taking care of them. Actually, uh, she since she saw I've got too much responsibility, she said to me, "It's fine. You can take care of your siblings. I'll take care of your kids." So she's the one who's taking care of my kids, and I'm taking care of my siblings. I'm living with my siblings. My kids are living with their grandmother. I support the way I can. Okay, so up to date. Uh, she's the one taking care of your children. Yes, and, and you are taking care, care of, of my siblings. Your siblings. Yes. Okay. So, so ha, ha, what about work experience? I mean, what kind of work do you do to take care of your siblings? At the moment, I'm not working. So, how do you take care of your siblings? I used to work at Pavilion Fego Cafe, and then uh, the shop was closed in 2016. That was when I decided to move to Chobe. So is it, hard, is it hard to find a job in South Africa? It's very, very hard if, you're not, if you don't have connections. To find a good job in South Africa, you must have connections always. Yes. Trust me, you must. You can't find a good job and it's your, uh, on your own in South Africa. You, have to you need to get connection. connection. Yes. Wow, before you can get a job. Yes, because after I relocated here to Jobek, I was working at Cesar. How old are you by then? Uh, 2016, how old I was? Uh, now I have to say my age. No, no, no. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Just... Okay, now. Okay, anyway. Okay, were... <laughs> help me count. Now I'm 32. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, I'm turning 33. February next month, mm -hmm. I'm turning 33. So mine was 2016? Yes, it was 2016 when I moved to the side, so let's count. So 2024 minus 2016, sorry, minus what? 20, 20, say 2024. Okay, 2024. Minus 1991. My, okay, 2024 minus 1991. Yes. 33. Yes, I'm 33. Now minus? Minus? Uh, 2016. Okay, minus 2016. Wait, 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 wait. 2016 minus 33. That's 1993. Okay, no, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I guess both of us, we are not minute. good in math. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 2024 <laughs> 20, minus 2016. Let's do it this way. Okay. That's eight. It's been eight years, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's been eight years. Mm. Okay. Mm. So what was the plan coming from back home to town? Uh, my plan was like I wanted to be independent because after my mom died, I moved to my father's older brother. Mm -hmm. So he's been the one who's been taking care of me. And then I was like, no, now I'm old. And beside my siblings, they were like fighting I wanted the, them to be on the same space with me. Maybe I can guide them better. And then I told my dad, oh, no, Papa, I want to move now. I want to move to Job again. And then he gave Before me. your dad was alive? No, my dad died when but I was... But you said Papa. Who is Papa? My brother's... <laughs> my father's brother. Uh, Papa? <laughs> yes. Okay. 
So most people, they think I'm his daughter, actually. Mm. Most people, they think I'm his daughter. And they know he was just raising me. He's my father's brother. Okay. So that's the papa? Yes. Okay. So you came with your siblings to, uh, to Jobe? Yes, I came with my siblings. Because me, I'm the only siblings who's from Gumet. My other three siblings, they are from the other surname, Kanduli. So me, I was living with my father's brother so he was taking care of me and i was like so did you have a place to stay in job when we were coming from your hometown yes i had one okay it was my father's older brother mm -hmm. house but then he was not there anymore he died long time ago it was only he his kids who were staying there but then because we're not from the same father we didn't get along and then the kids i came with they are not from their surname, so we had to move out. I had to move out and rent for my mother's kids and live with but them. But how long did you stay in that house? I stayed for like a year. Okay, before you moved out? Yes. So how did you get the money to move out? I was working at Cesane Studio by the time. I worked at Cesane Studio, I worked at SAPC, at SAPC. I did those, what do they call those things? Extras at uh, Generations. Mm -hmm. I was working there as an extra in Generations, so I got some money. And then in Cesane, I worked at Rhythm City, I worked at Tsitimo, I worked at uh, Skim Sam. So you as a South African are going to this hustle, this struggle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm thinking about the foreigners because, mm -hmm. <laughs> because if, the South Africans are really struggling this way. So what happened to the foreigners? This is a different topic for another day anyway. So you... No, <laughs> no maybe it's because mm -hmm. I was... I, I didn't have any qualification. The only qualification I have on my name mm -hmm. is only metric. Because when I was... I won a passare actually in Isolezwe. I was doing my first year at Ndomiso campus. And then I had to drop out and go and work at Pavilion so I can take care of my siblings. Mm, okay, so jobs in South Africa, based on what you're saying, it's not created by the government. Mm -mm. Don't bring a government on my side. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, based on what you're saying, uh, it means the jobs, mm -hmm. jobs in South Africa uh -huh. are not created by the government, it's by the individuals. Yes. Okay. So like most shops on the campus, I need to know. Campus. Rate it, rate it from, from, from 100, uh -huh. from 100, rate it. Yes. How many jobs in South Africa, let's say, belongs to the government? 100. One out of 100. 20%. To the government, yeah? Yes. Okay. So now, since you got employment and then you start making money, a little bit, I don't know, to help your siblings, mm. based on what you're saying, from there, what happened? And then there was lockdown. Mm, that was 2016? Uh, it was 2018 or 2019. Somewhere there about. There was lockdown and then we had to move back home. Ah, you went back home? Yes, I went back home with my siblings because the school were closed and I was like, no, let's go back to KZN. And then we went back to KZN on my mother's side. And then we stayed there for like a year. And then they said there's no lockdown now. The kids can come back to school. And I stayed back and my siblings came back. And then when they got back, they were, they looked for another place to rent because the place we were renting before, it was taken by someone else since we moved home. So they looked for the place. I asked a friend of mine, can you please take my siblings in while they are still looking for a place to rent? And then they found a place to rent and then they called me and then I sent them money and then they rented the place. Because we even sold everything we had before lockdown. So like they were sleeping on blankets mm. for like a whole month sleeping on blankets. Because I only bought blankets, a stove and a few dishes and then uh, a bad dish. I, I only bought that. So it means you were responsible for their upkeeping? Yes, because they were coming back to school. So I had to. 
Mm. Okay, so we're talking to Ginger um, on this channel, this SE Chat podcast. Uh, we're getting to know her, what struggle, bad, good she's been through. This is what we're talking about now. Uh, you talk about your children. Mm. Oh, okay, so in the middle of this stress, mm. you got time to get pregnant? Nah. Okay, so what happened? I was hurt. <laughs> my baby daddy was my first love. <laughs> mm -hmm. We dated when I was still in school. Mm -hmm. uh, I was 15, mm -hmm. doing grade 11 at St. Virginia High School. And my baby daddy was 16, doing grade 12 there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, on grade 12, my mom moved me to Umkazi Secondary School mm -hmm. when I was doing my grade 12 and I was 16 years old. Because both of us were very smart. Remember, I told you I want a passer and the people were very, very smart, me and my baby dad. And then I finished my matric when I was 16. And my baby dad as well finished his matric when I was 16. Same school? No, not same school. I need to you remember I told you that he was doing grade 12, I was doing grade 11. Mm -hmm. And then I moved when I, I was about to go and do grade 12. He was not there anymore. He was in somewhere in college in DUT doing his first year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Don't you think he got into this relationship because you were hungry? I mean, you needed money, you know? No, we got into a relationship when my mother was still alive. Ah, okay. Actually. So you were dating this guy way back? Because my mom died after the, the first year I finished my matric. That's when my mom died. And by that time, I was six months pregnant mm. when my mom died. And people from, from the community they were saying i'm the reason that my mom died why because she had stress that i am pregnant i didn't even have time to grieve for my mother because i was called names but luckily my grandmother was there to defend me mm, okay mm. i see so when you got pregnant for your baby daddy mm. and um now your baby daddy is in school, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. How did you cope? Or the baby daddy had cash too much? Nah. <laughs> he was still in school. The, the person who was hands-on, even now who's hands-on, it was his older brother, he's a teacher, mm -hmm. and his mother, Shem. I'll always be grateful for that woman. Mm -hmm. His mother was always there. Like, he, even if I, even now, if I need money, I can call him, hey, mom, I need 200. He will send it to me with pleasure. Mm. Even though we no longer date him with the baby daddy, but then we've got that boy. So the baby daddy come from a rich family? Uh, yeah, in rural areas, you know, they have those places, they will, those homes that were called, they are rich because they've got nice houses because all of them in that family, they are teachers. Mm. And they've got a, a beautiful home. So how come, how come you break up with this baby daddy? Okay, the reason I break up with <laughs> this is so emotional, I'm sorry. The reason I broke up with my baby daddy, it was because uh, when I was three months pregnant with our second born, uh, my mother-in-law called me. Uh, your mother family was here. And I was like, okay, what they were doing there? They came to report that a, your sister is pregnant by your baby dad. And I was like, what? That's She's pregnant to your sister? Yes. And then, and then I, I, like, I, I knew about the affair. And I went to tell my sister's mother, was, listen, I think your daughter is dating my baby dad. And she was like, that is why you're not married. Just write the name of the man in your forehead so everybody will know that it belongs to you. Even now, I'm not going to that family. I'm still waiting for them to approach Your, your, your biological sister? Yes. Where my mother was born. No, wait, 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 wait. Your blood sister? Yes. My mother's sister said that to me. 
And then the daughter was not sorry at all. She was laughing because the mother was busy swearing at me. Wow. She didn't know about you and then the guy first? How can't you know when we've got... That was my second pregnancy. You know, in rural areas, when you date someone, uh, there is this thing we do. We will carry blankets, wood, food, and go to that man's place just to inform them, I am dating your son. Mm, okay. So, so you, the whole know. community will know because they will hear noise. So they was hear. it that she, she was jealous? No, it was not jealous. It was because uh, you know how people do. When you no longer have a mother, they always take advantage of you. You said it's your sister. Yes. So why you say when you longer you no longer have a mother? Not from my mother. So the sister. My is mother mother and that woman, they are sisters. Okay, so 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 she's your step. Uh, let's say um, mm. your 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 mother's. Uh, I don't know how to put this one. Uh, she's she's a sister, but not the same blood. Yes, she's my mother, sister, daughter, oh, okay. something like that. Okay. Sorry for my English. I understand. Guys. I understand yeah. now. Now I get it. Yes. Okay. So she didn't knew, or she, she knew, but she maybe she was jealous, or I don't. Know. She knew very well. You know how people are when you become an orphan. There are always people who will Taking come advantage and take of you. advantage of mm. you. If they want someone to gossip about, you will be the first person they will gossip about. So me, I don't care anymore. If I hear something, they will say, hey, we had a family gathering and then we were gossiping about you. They said this and I'm like, nah, mm. I'm used to that. It's fine. Because I, I learned from a guy who is mm. a Ghanaian that mm. South Africans, if you had sex with, let's say, one of, I mean, ladies, mm. she can even talk to the friends or the family. I know this guy is good, I'm saying, he's good, he's bad. So maybe you, you, you say something about this to your sister. That's why she was like, let me go try. No, we're not even that close. I was not close to that family. Let me try next. But what I said, but what I said about South Africans, this is true, yes? Yeah, it's true. But then I'm not close to that family. I'll try and explain this. Excuse my English. Um, Pella, I grew up in rural areas, so I learned from not the best schools. So... Uh, we were not close with that family. When my grandmother got married, she already had my mother. She went to marriage with my mother. So we were raised by that family where my grandmother got married to. Mm -hmm. So the family that I'm talking about, there is, there is my mother's family. Mm -hmm. It's where is my mother's biological father is born. Mm -hmm. Those are her stepsisters, those one maybe. And I was like, maybe at some point they are trying to pay revenge. Ah, uh, that's you, why okay. they, are, they are doing that all those things. That was what you things. were thinking about. Yes, that's why they are doing all those things they are doing to me and they're not even sorry about it. So up to date, you are, are you cool with your sister? No, I'm not talking to her. I'm not talking to them. And there was this other time when I went to Inkantra Hospital, I had to do a birth certificate for my last born because I gave birth there. When I got there, she was the one who was writing the cards. And then she said, Nest. And I was like, can you please call me HR? I can't be helped by this woman. They were like, why? And ask her, she knows why. I was helped by someone else because I couldn't talk to her. So it's like you have a hatred for her? No, I don't hate her. I wanted her to, to be a mother to me as my, as my mother's sister, like not, a grown woman. Not to be a rival on the same mother. Yes, no, not take her daughter's side and insult me, swear at me, say all the bad things about me. So I didn't expect that from her. She was the one who was supposed to protect me. Mm. But then she didn't. So that was why you broke up? Yeah. With the guy? Yes, I broke so up. So the guy took the, your sister? No. Did they, they broke up. Mm -hmm. And then she, he, got, <laughs> he got another sister pregnant on my dad's side. <laughs> the same family? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Uh, the same family? <laughs> 
Why? The guy is living in the village? Yeah. Ah, okay. Like, he got uh, my aunt, pregnant. baby, pregnant. Mm -hmm. Like, all of, all, of, all of our kids are related. They are related. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, he is with that aunt now? No. They okay. broke up. Again? Yes, but me and that girl, Shemu, are friends. We, okay, with we, that one, you know, that one is a yeah, different issue. Yeah, it was history. And uh, and I was happy that... Uh, it happened. Uh, uh, I was happy because she took him from her. And I was like, you are my fighter. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I wanted her to feel the pain I felt. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm okay with her. Mm. Yeah. So now your mm. children have been taken care of by your um, in-law. Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm. So uh, back to Joburg. Currently, you are not working. Yes, I'm not. It's difficult to find jobs. Very. When you don't have any quali any qualification, it's very difficult. When and you say when qualification, when you don't have any connections, it's difficult. You said qualification and then connections. connections yes. So what qualification are you talking about? Connections I know, I mean to whom you know, that one fine. But um, what qualification are you talking about? I didn't finish my degree and they, I want to go back to school. I've been telling my little brother who's doing metric because he, he's been failing his grade level and he failed it twice. And I've been telling him, listen, I'm waiting for you to go to college so you can get an as fast. So I can have a break and finish my studies. You are the reason I paused my education because of you guys. I had to stop everything so I can take care of you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so currently, be frank with me. You are not working. Yes, How do you pay your bills? How do I pay my bills? Should I name them? Yeah. How do you pay your bills? Do you remember I told you about my family in Devon, my, yeah. my father's older brother? Mm -hmm. Sometimes he will send me money, uh, his wife will send me money. Uh, my sister, Cindy Lecomente, she's a lecturer. She so you have been taken care of by the family? Yes, by my father. father's family. Yes. So up to date, for how long have you, have you been now working? I mean, for how long? It's been two years full now. And they've been taking care of you for two years? Yes. Because they know my struggle. I've been crying in front of them. Whenever I'm visiting home, sometimes I'll visit home. And when I'm home, I'll get a call. My brothers are busy fighting. And then they will hear me shouting. So they know everything. And they were close to my mother. Okay. So now that you are not working, and you said you don't have qualification for some jobs that yeah. you want to apply for, yeah. why don't you choose jobs that your current qualification can get you employment? I've been trying. Trust me, I've been trying. Do you know when they say someone has bad luck? I'm one of those people who have bad luck. Because sometimes... I, I don't think you have bad luck. I do. No, 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 Trust no, no, me. No, no, no. This has nothing to do with bad Trust luck. Trust me, when you have bad luck, you have one. It, it's not bad luck. You I've don't have been, the qualification. You if, told me yourself you don't have qualification. Why listen, are you talking about besides bad luck? that, I always apply for jobs. I have got bad luck. Even if I apply for a competition, there was this competition I was supposed to win this other time, and then they hit my picture because I had so many people who came liking my photos, and then they would come back to me and say, we can't find your photo. Then I was like, nah, it's fine. When you have bad luck, you have one, trust me. I don't think about this. Yeah, it's bad luck. I think it's about mm. qualification. I, I, uh, for uh, me, no, no, for it, me. It's bad Why don't I find jobs at ShopRite? Because I've been applying there. Because I don't care where, Do you the, qualify? where the income comes from. At ShopRite, you can qualify with even grade 10. You can qualify. And what was Beside their, what my was their, what, what, what was your response for the rejection? Wait, from where? Surprise. They don't call you back and say, you know, they will call people they've selected. So what I'm saying, I've never applied to shop rights anyways. So I'm just saying, we would say, even if you don't have a qualification, you can apply to shop right. So do you think South Africa is very hard to live? It's very, very hard. Trust me. It's hard because I, I even thought, because I stayed 
in Canada for like uh, two years or a year. I worked in some school as a volunteer. I volunteered in that school for like some quiet time. And then when there was a, a, a position open, mm -hmm. they took someone else who was not volunteering. Me, I was busy teaching kids and mm -hmm. they didn't even consider me. Do you know what happened? Oh, baby. The mother hired his son. To take over? Mm-hmm. Told you connections, told you bad luck. When bad luck is there, when connections are not there, trust me, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Anyway, we're still talking to Ginger, <laughs> getting to know Ginger uh, from South Africa. We, get, we want to know South Africans and their hustle they go through because it's been the news in Ghana. It's Africa is good, the government taking care of them, they are making money. But listen to this story, it's like this is like a public city kind of news. But the reality is a different issue altogether. Mm. Okay, to, to, to end the whole story, mm. currently, um, what do you expect in life? Yo, the way I've got a good heart. Even the people who know me, they'll always tell you, Ruti, this one, shame, she got a good heart, that's why she's not going anywhere in life. And they will always say, if we had a bigger house, all of us would be living in your house, because that's how open I am, that's how I love people. Even now I'm not working. I'm still taking care of some kids that uh, they don't have parents. And the, me and my friends, we used to have this group where we'll, we'll have people who are struggling. By the time I was working, I was still staying in Devon. That lady came to me recently. I, I can't show you our chance just to protest her name, but she came back recently just to thank me for what we did for her that year. And then she said, I'll, I'll be always be grateful for what you guys did for me and your friends, even though during, lock, uh, during looting, my shop was looted, looted. But now I'm trying to get back on my feet. Talking about the looting, yeah. I watch videos of South Africans I don't know if it's all South Africans, but I watch video of South Africans uh, asking the foreigners to leave. That was what we call the xenophobia thing. And that's where I got to know the word looting. Mm. They were taking food stuff from these shops, blah, 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 but, breaking into but shops. But at that time no. when they were looting, they were not looting for this. They were not looting for South Africans to leave. Uh, they were looting for something else i don't like to talk about it since it's politics they were looting oh, so, for... so the xenophobia was politics yeah, yeah not xenophobia looting, the looting it, was, it was about politics mm. they were trying to bring someone back from jail who was arrested because because yeah. it's the perception of the foreigners out there that, no, that South Africans hate they were, other they, foreigners they country. were not looting for them they were looting for that person <laughs> to come out from jail. Okay, so they were, they like, wanted like the they were government fighting to for listen. Yes, they were fighting for that person. They wanted the government to listen. But the perception out there that South Africans hate for other foreign countries, is it, is it true or not? Some do, some they don't. What exactly is the problem? Why do you think South Africans, like yourself, who hate other African nationality in South Africa? Because there's so much crime now. And, uh, and, and then you think it's because of the foreigners. Did you watch this show, Sizoktola? Do you know that show? No. Uh, when you watch that show, you will see the show, it's always the Nigerians who are selling drugs. So mm. that's why. You just mentioned a name, Nigeria. So why are you <laughs> adding all African countries? No, I'm just, because... It, the show, it was always them on camera who are selling drugs. So, 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 so it has to do with a particular group of people. Yes. Because the show cannot That's be like... That's why there is xenophobia, because they don't want, we don't want drugs in our country. That's so listen, why. I understand what you're saying, but you just mentioned something, mm. that the show show 
was with a particular group of people, Nigerians. It was always them. They, they were some South Africans. They no, were... Forget about South Africans. Yes, I'm talking but about most other of them, it was Nigerians. Nigerians yes. So why do you include other nationalities if you think the whole video was about this particular group of people? No, we've got a problem with uh, uh, Zimbabwe as well. South Africans has issues with the other nationalities. No, not with, we have the issues with other nationalities. We have issues with... But, but you, yourself, uh, you yourself, what do you think about foreigners in this country? You yourself. Some foreigners are nice. Some other some are foreigners nice. are nice. Some are not. Some other are not. The same applies to South Africans. Because this other day, my brother came back, his arm was... Came back, his arm was... Cut. like this, uh, his pants like were torn apart. They took his phone, the phone I had to buy with my strike since I'm not working, so that my brother can look like other kids. I had to carry my phone, and then they took it just like that. Who, Who are they? It's Zimbabweans. They How do you know? Because it's, it's full of them there in Alex. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see. But it's not like South Africans hate. No, we message. don't. We just hate their actions, their doings. But you think South Africans are perfect, yeah? No, they are not perfect as well, because even them, there are some crimes they are doing. So, okay. no one is perfect. I see. Mm. I see. Okay, so in conclusion uh, to all this uh, conversation with ginger, what do you mean of ginger? Ginger is... Uh, is it's a vegetable, yes? <laughs> what is ginger? I'm a healer. When you have a flu, I'll heal you. <laughs> ah, you are. <laughs> so you have your own job. You're also a, a, I heal you're also, people. You're also a physician. I heal people. So, That's why. Yes, yes, yes. So you are also a physician. What? A physician. Yeah. You're like a doctor. Yes, I heal people. Ah, I'm heal ginger. People. I'll ginger you. So why are you looking for work? Because you have your work already. Ah, uh, Napela, that one is not real. That one is not real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that name, it was given to me. It was given to me by my friends because most of the time I like to mm -hmm. do my hair with color as in now. And that's the ginger. That's why they called me ginger. So me, whenever people are asking me, why are you call ginger? Like I'm ginger, I'll change you. I heal people. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So based on what you said, that's mm. why they gave you the name ginger. Yes, because I've got a lot of nicknames. Because uh, my siblings, they call me boss lady. Mm. Mm. I've listened to your story and then I've picked a lot of things from what you said. Mm. Your hustle, the hard way, the soft way and then you manage your way out. And then I know you've been through a lot, but there's a support from your father's side. Not holding you. Not from all of them, only from. But at least, but at least you have a support from your father's side. One family, that family, shame. Okay, but at least you have a support. It's from them, thank you, and I will always be grateful. Okay. And from my, Grandmother's side, Sibia family, they've been there with me all the way. And then when my grandmother got married to Mumalo family, they've been with me. So, yeah. Okay. So this is essay chat with um, Ginger. Uh, getting to know Ginger and also South Africans in general, not just Ginger. If you have any story to share, let us know. And then if you want us to come, to take videos of you, I don't know. If you want to come on the platform, the platform is also there for you to come on board. We can all have the chat, talk to know each other, and then um, we can, I mean, negotiate things together. Because it's like, we have this perception that South Africans hate other foreign nationalities. But we now, don't. from Ginger, it's we like- We just hate them for their doing, some of them, not all of them. But you're also doing the same stuff, mm -hmm. though. You understand? Mm. If I came from Ghana, I mean, I'm from Ghana, and then I'm in South Africa, how will I know that there's a place in, let's say, uh, in Pumulanga that I can sell, let's say, cocaine? How will I know? 
No, but the foreigners, they, no, no, they, when, when. they've been doing a lot of things. Like, trust me, they they listen, even listen. been selling our sisters, Sonje. What? Uh, wait, wait, we will come to that now. <laughs> listen, I'm just asking you a practical question now. Yeah. If I come from mm. Ghana, mm. landed in South Africa, how will I know that there's a place in Impumulanga that I can sell drugs to some people in Impumulanga without the help of citizens in South Africa? I, I won't answer that one because I don't know anything about it. No, no, you, you said you're you are talking about their deals in South Africa, right? Yes. So I cannot do a deal in South Africa without the help of South Africans. Hey, boy, you can. How? How can you come to Ghana? Nigerians are smart. How can you come to Ghana? Have you ever seen the cars that they are driving by Nigerians in South Africa? Okay. The way I speak is like you're jealous of Nigerians. No, I'm not. Trust me, I'm not. I love them. I want to even get married to them. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so, so you said some of, some of your sisters have been, been doing what? Like... Uh, you said they are selling them or what? Yes, like uh, most ladies who, who have been stolen. Most of most of them who've been found, uh, they've been found with for Let's start with the stolen to the found. Most of them who've been stolen from where to where? Uh, some they were stolen in clubs, some they were stolen in shopping malls. Some How? They, like, it's simple. When you go into the parking lots on the, on the mall, mm -hmm. my friend been to that situation. When you walk into a parking lot from the mall and then the car comes, mm -hmm. grab you, they put you in the car, go with you. For real? Yeah. And you think it's the foreigners? She did come back and confirm. They didn't steal her for, to sell her. They wanted her to withdraw money from the bank. And then she gave them pin and everything. They were busy. We drawing money, holding her whole stage, and then they took her phone, and then they dumped her after they were done. Okay, so in conclusion, what do you think about the South Africans and the other nationality and your lifestyle, the hustle? Just put them together, and then let's end this conversation. In conclusion, just to make peace, since we are all Africans, we must come together, work together, love each other and stop doing these things people are busy doing all right it was a nice time having uh, ginger on this show and uh, i hope to see her and other south africans on this platform some other day thank you for watching hello we a unique laser fighting yeah your promo and your product in your nasa say your laser Say your toothpaste, unique laser whitening, and your promo. I will need you now. So, 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 you see your laser. No, and you're very simple. Cry brush in me. Need you answer what choice to know now. The teacher will send this on you now. Come on, who we are now. What connected cable? No, and the amount of phone. Need you answer. Uber should train. No, After 16 minutes, and walk off, a back off, a call off, no, who were no minion, ah, come on, now walk out, could then you breast one, now, oh, dear, get paste, no, oh, too so, oh, dear, good brush, and soon, you know, come on, now, dear, you choose, soon, soon, you know, fair, fair, and who were no, general, no, musa, like, I don't want to say, your toothpaste, no, air twice daily, and opa, any, and you're and I, your laser, no, so no, air twice a week, but what's someone by? Ye and Carboni be a free venom. Bri bri bow a ye brunya. Bri bri bow a ye unique laser whiten or say money.